All right, not everybody lives in an area where they can take photos in wildlife. So I'm guessing a lot of people can take photos at the zoo. And in this video, I will show you how you can take photos at the zoo and put them in an area like a real wildlife situation. So for this tutorial, I'm going to use this photo, this Jaguar here, with the photos taken at the zoo. And we are going to put this Jaguar in a real wildlife area. So the only program I'm going to use is Photoshop. So if you got Photoshop, you can just follow along and do the same steps. I won't link this photo in the description. It's not my photo, so I can't do that. The first and most important thing is to get a clear cut of the animal. So for this, I'm going to use the pen tool, which you can find here. So if you select the pen tool and if you zoom in, you can get a nice clear cut of this animal. And the best way to do this is to also take a little bit of the ground that he or she is standing on. So in this case, I will get rid of this background using pen tool and I will also take this ground with me. So I'm not gonna cut it out here. I'm going to take all this ground here with me in the cut. So that way we don't have to create shadows because if you're gonna create shadows in Photoshop, it's really difficult to make them look real. So the best way to do this is to take a little bit also from the ground so we can skip that part and we only have to blend this ground together with a new background. So for this, just make a nice cut around the animal, zoom in and just go around the edge like this. Once you got the selection of the whole animal and the ground in this case, click on the first point again to close it, click right mouse next to it, click on make selection, and here you want to select one pixel as a radius. If we leave it at one pixel, we get a little bit of blur at the edge. Press OK. Now you want to click here to make a mask of it and that's it. So this is what I have now. You can see here, it doesn't look so real, but all these little things you can fix it later. If this doesn't look right, go to select the mask while clicking on the mask of it. And go around these soft edges to get a nice cut of the fur. Press OK, and that's it for this one. Now, once you got that, click right mouse on the layer, so next to these, these icons here, and select Convert to Smart Object. So this is the first part, and this is probably the most important part right now. Now, I want to create a new file. I'm going to press Ctrl, Command, N. I'm going to use Instagram size, so I'm going to do two times Instagram size for this one. Go back to our animal. Select this one and just drag it in our file. Now, if you press Ctrl Command T, you can bring up the free transform window and we can make this smaller so it fits our image. So I want to make sure it has a nice place somewhere in the middle, something like this. Now you have to make a decision of what kind of background you want. So you see what I do is I download a couple of images from, for instance, Pixel, Pixels, Pixabay, or Unsplash or any other free stock photo website. So just drag them here and put them behind this animal. Let's also put another one. I got also this one. Make them bigger. If you hold down Alt while making them bigger, it doesn't stretch out. It stays in the middle. Also got this one. And this one. Try to find at least five images to use the more the better so you can make a selection of which one you're going to use now you can compare all these and to see which one looks best all right so i got five of these images they're all pretty cool i think i'm not going to use this one because it looks a little bit weird it's like standing somewhere really high on the top so let's not do that one this one looks pretty good also like this background this one looks immediately like it's a real photo, so this is pretty cool. And this one can also create something with this or this. So these three I have left, so I'm going to try to use these three. Right, so the original photo looked like this. Let's go back to this one. You can see here it has a little bit of blur in the background. So you want to create the same kind of blur on the new image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rasterize this so it doesn't be a uh, it isn't a smart object anymore after that i will go to filter blur select lens blur with the lens blur we can blur out the background to make it look more real 
So if you play with the radius here, you can set the amount of blur you want to use. So if I look at the original image, it has like a little bit of blur here. So not much, but still some blur. So let's try to create the same effect on this one. Filter, blur, let's blur. I'm guessing somewhere in the range around 30, 30 to 40, something like this. Press OK. Right, this is a little bit too much blur, but it also looks pretty cool now. Let's do the same with this one. Gonna rasterize this again. And this time I'm gonna use the lens blur again, but I'm going to use a little bit less radius so we can compare those. Just a little bit of blur. And the same for this one. Filter, blur, lens blur. All right, what we have to do now is to get the colors right. So this is different for every background. This one looks pretty good already, so I'm not gonna do anything to this one. Let's do this one. You can see there's a blue sky here, and this part is a little bit more yellow than this one. So what we have to do here is create color balance here, an adjustment layer. Press this button here so we only affect the layer underneath it, and start dragging these sliders. So this is a little bit more yellowish, so I'm gonna add some yellow to this and some red to blend this better together. So something like this is fine. After that, you need to create a hue and saturation layer because when we drop colors, we can blend this better together. So what I'm going to do is get rid of some of these colors. Bring it slightly down. And the same goes for this background. It's a little bit too bright, too, too colorful, so I'm going to drop this. As you can see here, it blends pretty good together now. Also a trick to use photos without shadows. So this photo is taken in daylight and if you take photos and they have shadows, you need to make sure the shadows are at the same same side as the background. So for this one, I don't have to bother that. All right, so this looks pretty good as a blending. And next thing we have to do is to make this edge even softer. So what I'm gonna do is rasterize this layer, select the blur tool, and here we can set the strength. Let's leave it around 80, 90. And blur out the edge. This is even too much, so I'm going to drop this. Let's say around 50. And let's blur this out. Now we make making sure this, this Jaguar here will blend in better with this background. So you don't see this hard cut. All right, this looks pretty real already. Next thing we have to do is we can fix these whiskers. This is a difficult part. Well, it's not so difficult, but it takes a little bit more time. So for this one, I created a new layer. Go to the pen tool, make sure to select shape. And the fill we are going to leave empty. And for the stroke, I'm going to select white. I'm guessing this, these whiskers are a little bit white. Let's add some pixels to them. Let's start off with two and see how that looks. So select one point, click on another one and make the same whisker as the original one. Just re release the mouse and that's it. Now create a new layer, do the same for the next one. New layer again and for the next one. And do this for all these whiskers. If you have a curve like this one, you can do it like this and this. Next one. All right, so these whiskers are a little bit tinier than this one. So what I can do is I can select these whiskers, select the pen tool and change the stroke to one pixel. This looks better. Let's do one more. Let's do this one. And let's do this one. All right, now we can make the edges better. So when you select one whisker, I'll need to make sure this is one pixel instead of two. If you click on the mask here on the whisker and go to a brush, select the soft round brush, make it black, and brush the edges on the start side and on the end side. Same goes for the next one. A little bit here, a little bit here. Also that one. A little bit here, a little bit there. Let's also do this one, a little bit here, a little bit there. All right, and now we can brush these edges better. 
So what I'm going to do is make a mask, click on the mask of it, select the black brush, and let's brush this better. You can get rid of these. You won't see these anyway. And let's get rid of these whiskers from the start. You can see here I didn't make a real good cut of it, but okay. So when you have edges like this, you can see it's like a black border here. You can select the clone stamp tool, select the norm, just a normal brush here and leave those settings, make them smaller, hold down alt, make a little line and bring it to the edge. Just make sure it stays in this selection. So I'm going to click on this leopard here. So I'm going to click on this Jaguar here while holding down command or control on Mac or Windows. So I'm going to make this selection by holding down command or control on Windows. Click on this layer so it makes the selection and just hold down alt make a line and bring it to the edge so that way you can get a nice edge of all this fur so if you do this on a whole image you can get a nice cut all right next thing we can do here is to get more colors dead all right let's get some more nice colors in this one so what i'm going to do is create a gradient map on top of everything i have these 105 inspiring b gradients if you google those you can find those and here I'm going to select something that looks nice. So this looks pretty cool, but of course it looks too weird, not real. So what I'm going to do is drop the opacity of it. Change the blend mode to soft light. As you can see, this was before, this after looks a little bit better. Let's also do some curves here. I'm going to select curves. Let's increase the highlights and make the darker, a little bit darker. Like that. Now we can also do some red here. Let's make this a little bit like that. Same for the green one. Just slightly. And the blue one. Now we can leave the blue one. So this looks pretty cool. It looks pretty real. So if you do this really precisely, you can make like a real photo that was taken at the zoo. And this is what it looks like in real life. So try to do this really precisely. I'm sure you can create something really cool. And if you want to make some effects, you can also create a new layer filled with 50% gray. Change, change blend mode to overlay. Select the dodge tool. And for instance, lighten up these eyes. Of course, you don't want to do it too much because you still want to have like a real photo instead of an uh, edited photo. So that's pretty much it to make your photo look like a real wildlife photo. So thanks for watching.